Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another small compact land vehicle that could prove very useful in survival mode when it comes to say, moving wreckages out of the way, collecting up batteries from enemy outposts that have somehow fallen off the entire structure, or just for transporting cargo containers from one place to another, say you're doing a lot of trading and just want to move the container instead of having it locked down on your structure. So this thing sitting right next to me is called the Taper U9L Compact Forklift, which well, does what it says in the tin. We've got two landing legs attached on the hinges, and they've been synchronized together, so when you hit one button from the cockpit, they'll both move all the way up, and of course you can move them all the way down. In between them, if I move my character out of the way, there we go, we've got a piston with another magnetic plate attached onto it, which you can then extend all the way out to say grab hold of a wreckage, connect yourself onto it, and then drag it away where it can be scrapped up easily, or maybe just move it out of the way of a general vehicle that's trying to come through this area. We have cameras galore all the way around this, so we can get a good view with exactly what's going on, and we have a very strange wheel setup, which I've never seen before. In fact, I'll just grab hold my character and show you this right now. So we're hopping into this and then coming in like so. If it was to hold down A or D, what's going to happen is the wheels are now going to spin around and we're going to start to move E4360. It's very reminiscent of a tank on its caterpillar tracks, but you just turn on these spawns. Yes, it does make it quite wonky to drive around. It does jitter around, as you can see, through the start of this video. And right now, it does shake quite a lot. But it doesn't really wander off by itself. It is pretty stationary due to the way it's all been set up. Anyway, with the free camera once again, going like this, pressing F10, finding in the sport menu, the taper is 102 small blocks using one hell of a lot of the DLC packs. We can see here a nice bit of information about it, such as what it's for, its features, and how to use it. So let's simply give this a thumbs up. Move around towards the very front, we'll have a very quick pan around the outside. Then we're going to test out against this Mars outpost, which I have showcased a long time ago. So it does have a few wreckages here and there that can lift up, move around, and show you what this thing is built for. So at the very front, what we can see is our landing legs and magnetic plates, which are attached onto our moving systems, built to, to well drag stuff around. Moving down here, we pass these neon tubes, they've got a camera, so we can view exactly what's going on, or a programmable block right below there, which is for our special script, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Right below here, we then got some smaller wheels, which when combined with the wheel setup, is what causes it to act very strangely when you move it around and try to drive it like a regular vehicle. If you were to come around onto the side, here we go. So there is our industrial cockpit to drive this thing around. There's our wheels. There's our suspension for our small wheels right under the cockpit, so they are very close to the grounds. And over onto this section, we've got a little protruding section. We've got our mounted camera, so we can see exactly what's going on when we're controlling our landing legs, which are attached onto those hinges. We're gonna move around and come around towards the very back of this thing. Here we go. So we've got a secondary camera to reverse this thing up. There's a connector to dock it up. And of course, the store a few bits and bobs that you might need on your journey. Down below there, there's your reactive power this thing. There's a little access panel to play around with. Then we've got four lights, two red, two yellows that should light up as we have to move this thing around. Going all the way up and looking down this thing. So there's our conveyors that go across to our connector. Then into the back of our cockpit. There's a rotating light with a very nice bright yellow color coming off it. There's the top of our cockpit. There's another little light to light up the darkness. And there are hinges to go across our landing legs. Then of course our piston right in the middle of our magnetic plate. They're sitting right at the end. Come all the way down on the other thing. Here we go. And that's all we can see. So there's our small wheels. There's some batteries. There's some artificial mass. And there is our gyroscope which is currently turning on and off constantly. So that's how the script has been set up to make it more controllable. Anyway, that's that for the outside, and it does look bloody fantastic how it's all being set up. There's quite a lot of stuff going on with this, despite being a very simplistic thing to look at. But what I'm going to do now is grab hold my character, come into here, find that programmable blog, and I'll show you what's going on with this. So into here, coming down to edit, we can see we've got our advanced wheel control script, which is how this is all functioning, and why it's so wonky to drive it around. Yes, now what I'm going to do is now try to drive this over to a little wreckage, which is sitting right over here. This spawns in default in the world, so I haven't placed this myself. Work our way all the way up to it with the HUD now on. We now see all of our controls. So with the press number two, this is going to push out our piston, which has a magnetic plate on the end of it. And once that's extended out a certain distance, we'll then automatically lock once we make contact. It might need to get a bit closer. There we go. Now we can come out of that camera in third person view. Now we can just pull this vehicle out of the little hole it made and take it over to a place where it needs to be repaired up. It might be a bit awkward because the wheels do not have much power behind it, but we can, if we wheel this around, eventually get all the way out. Of course, if we don't want to do that, we need to undo that, pull that back, and then use our landing legs, come all the way up to it, then press number three, that'll lift all the way up, then we can put it all the way back down. Bring the sunlight back around, that'll do just about, in fact, mine need to go like so, we'll just ignore this for the moment and come over to another little thing that I did place in the world, 
purely for example purposes. Over to here and over to this little assembler, a basic assembler, we're going to come all the way up to it onto its flat side and actually test out these landing legs. So all the way up to it, it will automatically lock. In third person view once again, we now press number 2, lift it all the way up. Now we can actually properly drive this to where it needs to go. And let's say we're going to take it around behind this building. Here we go, this will do quite nicely. And then we now just drop it all the way down to the ground. Press number 1, and then we will reverse away. Well, let other people deal with that problem. You did see I was shaking around quite a lot as I was moving that thing along. Not too much you can do about that because that's simply how the wheel's been set up. But what I do want to do is come back over to this vehicle and I'll actually probably pull out of the hole. So don't think that example was too great with me just leaving it where I was stuck. So back into number four. Here we go. Now I'm going to press number two. Pull that all the way out. There we go. Now I'm going to clamp myself onto it. Now we can just pull it out. And there we go. That's now fully out of the hole. Back into the third person view. And there we go, we now just salvage this vehicle, and now take it back to wherever it needs to go. Of course we can press number 1 to disconnect that, retracting the piston, and away we go. But yes, with that example out of the way, or that demonstration out of the way, what about the rest of the controls? So we've seen number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4, but number 5 is going to be for our camera that sits on the very right hand side of our cockpit, so we can get a good view of what's going on with our landing legs when we come to connect them up, and of course lift them up, and move them down. Number 6 for your camera at the back of this vehicle, so we can now reverse this thing up with ease and without risking any damage to this vehicle or anything else that you could potentially crash into. Number 7 send for your connector at the very back of this thing to lock and unlock it. Number 8 send for your batteries to auto recharge, which you can always use in place of the reactor if you don't have access to uranium. Well, speaking of reactors, number 9 send to turn on and off, and as you can see, we don't actually need it. We can move this around perfectly on battery power. And there we go with all the controls. But as for that, that's pretty much it. But all this little thing has to offer. It's a fantastic thing to use in your world if you do want to play around with a small little logistical vehicle to save move containers from one place to another, or like I said, steal batteries from enemy outposts such as pirate outposts in the event, say, you can't actually build them yourself, or just simply don't have the resources at that current point in time. I know I've had that in a few games of survival with a few friends, but we see a good raid of pirate outposts, we then get a battery, of course you can't grind it up because the battery components will be destroyed, so you need to somehow get the battery, link it up to your ship, where you do use maybe a flying version of this vehicle, just go and collect it up, drop it onto a merge block, connect it up to your ship, and then drain all the power out of it. So you just use this instead of a flying drone, if that's what you want to do. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this vehicle. It's very self-explanatory what it does. There'll be a link to its kitchen below if you start it and play around yourself. I highly recommend you do, because it's a lot of fun. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.